Well, hello everyone. I'm glad you could join us today. It is December 12th, and we're going to be reading through Revelation chapter 9 today. And I want to do things just a little bit different. I'd like to read the passage first and then do a little bit of commenting uh, on that. So let's go ahead and read, and then we'll come back and I'll share a few things. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had a king over them, the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon, that is, destroyer. The first woe is past. Two other woes are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. The rest of mankind, who were not killed by the plagues, still did not repent of their work of their hand, hands. They did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, and stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Phew! That's a, that's a mental exercise. <laughs> just reading through that passage uh, I'm pretty sure just like anybody else we've all got some kind of wild imagination and some wild pictures going through our minds right now uh, but what I want to really get out of this is this really is just it's such a humbling passage and is filled with deafening descriptions of God's wrath upon sin and sinners who do not turn from sin trust in grace and his mercy offered to them aside from the apocalyptic nature of revelation uh, there appears many simplistic nuggets, I think, as I read through the book, for us to grasp. In our passage today, we see a people who faced through Revelation first, and then will face it personally, that is a devastating end to life and an eternity that will be forever filled with anguish and unceasing torment. We find a very descriptive picture of creatures that are used by God to torture those who have and still reject Him. You will see as, as you, you saw as we read through the passage, uh, that there were several creatures that, honestly, they're very scary looking. I'm not sure that I would want to run across any of these. But there were plagues released. Uh, there were, uh, the creatures were stinging. They had the ability to sting people uh, like a scorpion would sting. And all these were to bring about suffering that would make them literally just dream of death. But, but death would elude them, it said in Scripture. Death would come to a third of mankind. The rest, well... We saw at the end, but we'll talk about that again here in a minute. As I think about my own life, and I, I hope that you do as well, how we are prone to sin, and when 
And when we know that sin leads to death, that sin leads to destruction, that sin is not good. I am reminded about all the temptations of idolatry and immorality, specifically, as it mentions in our passage today, sexual immorality that surrounds you and it surrounds me on a daily basis and how prone we are to compromise uh, with sin. To give our affections and attention in idolatrous, idolatrous ways to even good things in the world, but not the great God uh, that is over the world. So as we read through the passage, uh, I, want, I wanted to hopefully, uh, I read kind of fast through it, but I hope as you read through it in your own time, that you will see and take in what John saw that day as God displayed his justice and grace upon the people. And so uh, something that I learned, and I think that we all could learn about God in this passage, is that God's mercy is revealed. Even, even in a time in Revelation 9 when we see John being shown that all of these creatures are going to come out, a third of mankind are going to be killed, and even the people will still continue to not repent. And uh, certainly the disaster in for them as well. But I think that God's mercy is revealed because he's telling them all this ahead of time. They have the opportunity to repent. They have an opportunity to turn to him. And also, I mean, God's the creator, so he has a right to destroy anybody uh, because of their sins. And he can do it immediately. It's not something that is uh, catches anybody off guard. But also, uh, we can see that uh, what God keeps doing to bring his creation back. And not just in Revelation, but in passages all over scriptures, we see that uh, God, God doesn't just kill people, God warns people, turn to him to be saved, turn to him, turn to him, stop sinning, and you will be, uh, you will be saved. But what do we learn about, uh, about God's wrath? Because God's wrath is also revealed in this passage. I think that God will not ex ignore sin. I don't think that he will ever ignore sin. And I think that his justice and his judgment, it has to come because he is just and he is the justifier. And again, it doesn't come by surprise. It's always a warning. There's always an opportunity to change and to turn. And so his justice, his mercy, uh, it, I think is shown even through Revelation chapter nine. But what do we learn about people? I think what we learn about people, I don't know about you all, but me, I think we just learn that we're just, we're just downright hard-headed and resistant. Uh, we know, uh, we know we're given opportunity after two, opportunity after opportunity uh, in, in scripture in particular. That, even, that doesn't even account for what God works in our lives and who he puts in our lives and the other things that he puts in our lives to, to get us to repent, to stop the sin. And oftentimes we, uh, I know I do, I, I think I can handle things myself. I think that my way is better than God's sometimes. And uh, it's always disastrous. It always turns out bad. So with all that thing with God's mercy and God's love, his, his opportunities, his justice, his judgment coming, and us being resistant most of the time and just plain out hard-headed. So what would be our next step? I think that our next step would be simply to repent while there's still time. Uh, to just stop with the madness. Just turn from God. I mean, I... Just, just even if it's as simple as saying, I don't really want to come face to face with any creature like that. Because if, you, if you're going to if you're going to come face to face with a creature like that, and you you don't have fellowship with God, you, you already know how it's going to end. And I just don't really want to go through that. And so I think that I think that we need to repent uh, while there's still time. I think we need to turn back to God before it's too late. And that's that's not a one time deal. That's an ongoing thing. Uh, because oftentimes we continue to stay resistant and there's so many aspects of our lives that really we need to be repentant of. And so I think that as you go through your time today uh, and, and read Revelation 9, of course read it, don't read it out of context, read it you know, from the other chapters before and after, but just see, because at the end of the chapter, we saw that even after all this took place, there were people that still wouldn't repent. They still would not change. And uh, I pray that, uh, that that would not be us. That when Christ comes back, he will find us ready and willing to serve him for eternity and to, to bow uh, to him knowing that he's going to receive us. So that's, that's what I have from that. I really just wanted to focus on the, the practical side of that chapter. 
uh, rather than the uh, apocalyptic side, and, and I hope that you appreciate that, and I hope that you will uh, read into that as well. So I'm going to pray, and then we will we'll be done today. Father, I'm so grateful to you for your word. I am thankful that you, uh, you choose, you could, but you choose not to uh, just wipe us away. There's always an opportunity. You gave us, and you still give us opportunity to turn to you. And so I pray for myself, I pray for those watching this video uh, today or any time in the future, uh, that uh, we would take you, that, take you up on that opportunity, that we will continually uh, be repentant of the things that we do and knowing that it's just going to continually draw us closer to you. And Father, I'm so grateful for those warnings, for those opportunities, uh, because your desire is not to see us fail. Your desire is not to see us spend eternity with the enemy, but your desire is surely to see us uh, repent and draw close to you, come through Jesus to you, and spend eternity in glory, uh, serving you for all eternity. And Father, we're so grateful for your word and for you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, folks, until we see you again, you are sent. Have a good day.